Welcome to Drummer Talk's Guide to Wrapping Mallets. And if you are listening right now on the podcast, remember that this video will be available on YouTube. We're going to embed it directly into the, uh, into the show notes that you can check out at Drummer Talk show number 198. That is today's show for November 7th, 2013. So we're going to be talking about wrapping mallets. And this was something that uh, always seemed like an enigma to me when I was in school. And uh, this is my sad, sad, sad mallet. And uh, if you're listening, you can't really see, but there's there's literally, uh, it looks like it has a, a mane. You know, it's it's just falling off. It's, it's really in, in very, very, very sad shape. But all hope is not lost. As lost as this mallet looks, and let me see if I can kind of, I'll get it nice and close to where it can focus there, I don't, I don't know if the camera's not going to do it, but uh, but uh, if this mallet is is in very very sad shape, the good news is, for like seven bucks, you can wrap up to four pairs of mallets um, with with these, and so all you're going to need is you're going to need first of all some scissors, because we've got to get rid of the old mallet. Uh, so that's one piece of gear. We'll talk about gear first. And these aren't special. You know, these are just you know standard scissors. Uh, you don't so have what to. What you're saying is you don't take a lighter and you burn off the rest. No, do not do not set fire to your mallet. That will that will make it very difficult to try to wrap later. But uh, we just need some some scissors. Uh, just really basic scissors. You don't have to like buy super specific embroidery scissors or anything like that. Just you just need some scissors to cut off the old and get in with the new. Okay, so that's gear piece number one. And we'll, we'll have uh, information for this uh, in our show notes. You first need some scissors. Okay, the second thing you need to, to get is some needles, some sewing needles. And uh, the, make sure, and this isn't, this isn't the only way to do this. This is what works for me. And this has been my success that I've used. Make sure that you get, for me, I get size 18 needles, and they're the darning kind. And if, if, if you've never gone and looked for needles, by the way, I got all this stuff at Michael's. It used to be, once upon a time, that you can walk into any Walmart, even like Sears, those kind of things. They would have a hobby section, and they would have yarn. I don't believe, I, I, it, in, here in Orlando, I couldn't find any yarn at a Walmart. Not, not to mention the idea of going into a Walmart is re repellent to me, so because I hate Walmart so much, uh, because I spend more time checking out then I actually do shopping regardless of the time or the size of my order. Uh, so I got all this stuff at Michael's and, and the yarn is like stuffed in the back and you will be absolutely surprised when you and all the sewing stuff. So when you first get back there, you're probably going to be completely overwhelmed with how much stuff you probably never knew existed. There are so many different kinds of needles, so many different kinds of yarn and thread and cord and, and all these other kind of different things. So, um, I'm just going to tell you what works for me so you can go in and look and find what you need. Okay, now, now so scissors, don't, don't, you don't have to buy special embroidery scissors, just scissors from a Home Depot or something. Some of the smaller, smaller scissors might work better because you can, you, can, you can get into and around, but I don't see the need spending $13, yes, $13 for special embroidery scissors that are just a little bit smaller. And let, let's face it, we're, we're, the reason we, need, we would need small scissors is to get like really intricately close, but because we're not doing that with our mallet, um, just some, some basic scissors will allow us to do that. So you need some needles, okay? And so get size 18, and size 18 has to do with the, uh, the size of the needle, the thickness of the needle, as well as the size of the eye. Now, if you get something too small, like embroidery needles, embroidery cord and embroidery thread uh, is a little bit smaller, and so the embroidery needles are going to be uh, have a much smaller eye, and you're going to have a really difficult time getting yarn into embroidery needles. So you don't want to get embroidery needles unless you you like mind-numbingly frustrating needle threading things. I don't do that. So these are, these are just super simple. This was like a buck 99 and there's uh there's, there's, there's no different sizes. There's just all one. These are darning needles, size 18 darning because we are darning. You darn with yarn. And so that's one way. <laughs> that's one. Oh, no. it's, it's, it's a, it's a memory device. What? There, no, no, it works. It works. A stupid question. Um, uh -huh. 
because I can't see what you're doing right now, <laughs> is the needle made of metal or is yes. it made of plastic? It is made of metal. You absolutely want okay. metal needles. As a matter of fact, I didn't even find any any plastic needles when I was looking. But these are these are metal. These are probably steel. Uh, I don't I don't know what what they're actually physically made of. Uh, they're nickel nickel plated steel, and so that's what you want. You don't want them super long. They make darning needles, which are like you know surgeon's needles. You don't need anything like that. Uh, just straight up size eighteen darn. Remember, you darn for yarn. Yarn. Okay? Don't get embroidery needles, and don't whatever you do, do not get tapestry needles. Tapestries are uh, tapestry needles are giant thick behemoths, and they have giant eyes. And you might think, you know, I need a, a, a needle with a larger eye so that I can, you know, thread it more easily. Okay, yes, you will be able to thread it more easily, but what you sacrifice or what you gain in threadability, you absolutely sacrifice in uh, the thickness of the needle. Because what's going to happen as we are sewing this, because you will have to sew, half of this is, is, uh, is wrapping, the other half is sewing. So you, you, there will be some sewing involved here. And you want to be able to have a needle that is just big enough to hold the yarn, but not so big that it makes it in, impossible to kind of push through the yarn, especially, you know, considering how tight you may or may not have it. So don't get tapestry needles. Don't get thread needles. Don't get embroidery needles. Get what? Darn. You want darning needles? You darn for yarn. Cool. So that's gear piece number two. You need scissors and you need needles. The next big thing is yarn. And if you walk into Michael's, you will be absolutely overwhelmed with all of the yarn possibilities. And you, you have, you have more than one choice when, it, when it's not just color. You're not just choosing your color. There's embroidery threads and it has all different sizes and it's really, really mind numbing. But what you really need to look for when you go pick yarn is the yarn will have a little number on it. And this number, it says number three. Okay, and that has to do with the, the weight of the yarn. Basically, the bigger the weight, the, the bulkier the yarn is going to be. And it, it, it depends on, you know, the, the yarn maker um, has to do with the number of plies. Okay, and you want to stick with two or three ply. Okay, so for me, in my experience, I have discovered that yarn, which is given the weight of three, which is light. And I'll see if I can't uh, push that up under the camera, make it focus and it's probably not there it is all right number three um is good number four can work but i have found that the, that the the four is a little too heavy it's called medium but it's a little too thick and it's uh the the kind of the the thicker the yarn is then the poofier it's going to be and the more it's going to flatten out and the more it flattens out you run the risk of it tearing and breaking Okay. Now, does number three yarn versus does number four yarn, even though it's harder to work with, would it last longer? No, be, because it doesn't wrap as tight because it's a thicker yarn. I mean, you can try to kind of wrap it up. Um, I have found that the number four yarn wears out quicker, regardless of if it's, if it's cotton or acrylic or polyester or, or whatever. My experience has been that it, that it, it it's it wears out. Gotcha, because you can't wrap it tighter. Yeah. Is there a brand name that you like to use and, and maybe a brand name that you like to stay away from? Uh, not a really brand name that I like to stay away. This is a Patton's, which is just a, what I like about this yarn, and it's a number three yarn. And because I'm wrapping vibe mallets, okay, with vibe mallets, you tend to gravitate more towards your, uh, cord, whereas with um, marimba mallets, you would want yarn. And so uh, when, when I'm dealing with... Um, vibe mallets, I do a cord. I, I like this, the thread here. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a patents grace and, uh, it has, uh, some colors. Uh, when I do uh, marimba mallets or soft symbol mallets, then I will actually use baby yarn because it's really soft. The, the downside is trying to find a nice, you know, aggressive manly color in baby yarn is difficult. <laughs> And so oh, find, that's not happening at all. Right, yeah. yeah. No, you're going to be stuck with powder, powder blue or pink or, or beige or white. Personally, I don't like white mallets because they get dirty. This is an orange. I wanted to replace it with the same kind of color red. I have a red mallet here, but uh, this is an orange. And so this is pretty close. I like, well, I, they had a gray that I could have gone with, but because I, I'm using these for vibraphone and I have a gray vibraphone, which you kind of see in the background, there it is. Um, uh, because I use my peripheral vision, 
then having a mallet that was the same color as the vibes would have been uh, really difficult for me. So, uh, which is why actually yarn mallet works pretty well on marimba because the, the contrast between the wooden bars and the white mallets kind of, kind of works. So uh, no, as far as brands I would avoid, not really. There are so many different kinds of brands. My biggest advice would be to make sure that you look at the, 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 the number and make sure that you don't get, definitely don't get anything five or six. That's going to be way too poofy. You won't be able to wrap it tight enough and uh, you're only going to make it kind of stretch and it's, it's really not going to work. It's going to be a nightmare to work with and you can forget sewing it up. You can, for, you can forget about it. So trying to, trying to sew in, in around these kind of tight joints uh, for, for, for mallets, it's going to, it's not going to work for you. It's not. So uh, uh, avoid that. Try not to get the two. They have a two, which is a, it's called fine. Like the two is fine. Uh, I've never seen a one. I'm sure it exists. I don't know what they call one, but two is fine. Three is light. Four is medium. And five and six, they're called bulky. And so those are the ones which, which are crazy colors. They have like shiny threads and stuff built in or uh, wrapped into it. Uh, and and the, you're never going to be able to sew those things off. So um, I, I've opted for this. It's kind of a cord because I'm dealing with a, uh, a vibraphone mount. And so that, that's, what I, that's why I wanted that. Now, um, when, when you're setting out to do these things, um, th there's a little bit of a heartbreak when you go to cut these things off. And uh, what I'm dealing with here is uh, this is a percussion, percussion construction mallet uh, made by my good friend uh, Bruce Sailors, who was with Promark and is now with uh, Sailor. I think it's uh, Sailor's Percussion, or he's gone. He's he's left Promark and is back to making his own mallets. So uh, I, I, hi Bruce, if you're watching or whatever. And so th they've just seen their their better days, and it's time to rewrap. When you're wrapping mallets, and you're especially when you're rewrapping a factory wrapped mallet, you've got to understand that it's never going to look like it did out of the factory. That's just part of it. It's, it's never going to be that nice. As, as, as good as you can get at doing this, it's never going to have that, that, that sheen to it. Right? It, it's, imagine like you, know, you buy a new pair of jeans and you, and you wear them and there's a new jean smell and they feel a certain way. Then you wash them and they're never quite the same as, as off the rack. This is going to be that same kind of thing. As long as you're cool with that and understand, then, um, then, then you're going to be. Okay. Cool. Did you have any? Did you have any questions, Troy? Before well, before I um, get started, the only couple of questions I guess I have in in my experience um, of breaking stuff. <laughs> do you find that each mallet company, whether it be Promark or uh, Innovative Percussion, do they have their own wrapping techniques that you have to try and recopy? Or uh, you know what? I don't know. Um, I use one, one technique, and this is a technique that, that you wrap and then you sew off the top to create kind of a crown, and then you sew off the, the neck here. There, there might be a, a special term for that. I've, I've never learned it. And they, these are all wrapped by machine, and they all wrap them. Um, Bruce t told me that his machine can wrap a mallet in about 15 seconds because it spins, and the wrap goes, done, and then it gets sewed up automatically, <laughs> and, and, and there it is. Right. This is this will this will take, and we might have to edit the video because I'll probably do some time lapse. You know, we'll be back in a minute and pull like a a, a Rachel Ray pull the, the the thing out of the oven that's already cooked or whatever. But um, but I, I haven't really examined that. Like some mallet companies don't have a top crown, right? It's just smooth over the top, and I haven't successfully been able been able to do that because the uh, the, the the threads kind of start. Um, start falling apart. And th this is just kind of the technique that works for me. I've used it for, for marimba mallets, for cymbal mallets, and for, uh, for vibraphone as well. So I've not really, I'm not looking to, to uh, copy innovative percussion or Promark or Vic Firth wrapping technique because it's done by a machine and it would be next to impossible. I, I do the one that I know. It's like my, <laughs> it's my one wrapping technique and I just apply it to whatever mallets I need. The things that will affect it, though, are the uh, the shape, the shape of the mush, uh, the uh, the mallet head. For instance, you can have a, a ball mallet, which is just a little rubber ball core. Uh, you could also have a, a kind of a flatter disc, or you can have what you often find with vibraphone, a mushroom head mallet, and that's what uh, vibraphone mallets are. So you have mushroom, kind of the the disc oval, and then you have the um, the round. And so the round ones make, obviously, they make kind of more of a ball. The mushroom head makes the, uh, the asymmetrical kind of, you know, if you're looking top to bottom. And the discs make just more of a kind of a, of a 
of an oval round kind of sound. It's, uh, it's, that was not the most descriptive, <laughs> descriptive <laughs> I think, I think we outline, but, but, but there we go. Um, All right, let's jump into it. Yeah, so the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of the old. Get rid of this old junk and uh, and put your heartbreak aside. And w what I'm doing, and I'll try to get as much of this into the camera as possible, is I am going under, under the threads around the neck to cut it off. Okay, and it's it's painful. And, uh, man, I should move my keyboard because I'm about to get yarn dust all up in my computer keyboard. So let me let me do that real quick. And yeah, while I'm doing that, <laughs> things I did not think about. All right. Okay, so I'm just uh, I'm just cutting off the uh, around the neck of it. Okay, and as I'm doing this, um, you'll see a lot of like yarn stuff kind of start falling off, and that's okay. You know, you'll and you'll have the ring which will come off, and this ring around the bottom around the neck. This is what we're going to sew and replace. We're going to create our own our own neck, but you, you, you kind of tr trim it all around the bottom and then this ring will fall out and you'll notice that you'll be able to start pulling things up off of the mallet. Okay. And you have that, the bottom neck, which has been sewed. And then we have the top and I'm going to, I'm going to trim it around the bottom just a little bit more. I try not to cut myself with my scissors. This is one of those instances where you're like, you know, maybe I should have sprung for the $13 scissors, but the pain is short-lived, <laughs> and then you can take that 13 bucks and go buy a DVD or something. Okay. And, and when you start pulling these off, you can see just the precision and the, the precision that goes into these, into, these, uh, into these mallets. Those machines are expensive to make. Yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, now I'm going to trim off the top cap here. Okay. So I trimmed off the top cap. And right now you're like, hey, I can just leave it like that. Well, you really can't. And then once the top cap comes off, then you can start pulling. And that's what you're looking to get. You're looking to get to where you can get to the single thread aspect, and then you can just start kind of pulling it around. And I got as much as I could there. Let's find the beginning of it. There we go. And I'm pulling it off. And where did you learn to do this, Dave? I learned to do it uh, while I was at Appalachian State. There was a, um, a student whose last name completely escapes me. Her first name was Rachel. And uh, she was kind of the marimba virtuoso. And she just kind of taught the, other, taught the underclassmen how to do it. You know, she was a senior, I think, or a grad student the year I was a freshman. And so we just kind of... All she we, she provided the yarn for us, and we all sat around, and we all just kind of learned how to do it. She was really, really gracious and patient, and and taught me how to do it. And uh, it had always been a giant mystery to me. And there we go. So I'm pulling it off, and I can see that this mallet and each of the mallets that that you uncover will have different properties to them and different types of cores. They could have PVC cores. They could have uh, cores made up of rubber or vinyl, uh, or they could be like this core which has kind of a PVC kind of polycarbonate type of a core with felt wrapped around it. Okay. And it's, this is what gives, um, you know, de determines whether it's hard or whether it's a soft mallet, uh, what the attack sounds like. And, and when I, when I'm playing this mallet, because of the felt, I can hit soft and get a really soft attack. But if I, if I strike it harder, then uh, the core, the, the felt will flatten. Well, all the yarn will flatten and the felt will flatten, allowing the, the core more, percussive yeah, to take more of a per percussive attack. And so these are, these, are, these are hard mallets. And these are kind of my go-to mallets because they really project on the vibraphone. Um, not really, you know, you wouldn't want to play like Mirror from Another <laughs> with these. They're not the most uh, delicate sounding, but for like doing jazz and lead lines and things like that. So I have this, uh, this yarn that I can now toss. Cool. All right. So now I am, I'm ready to go. And important when you, when you get new yarn on one of the sides, typically the top, uh, you will find that the, the, the beginning of it is actually kind of buried into the hole here. Okay. So fish around and pull it out. Whatever you do, do not start pulling from the outside. Yarn is designed to pull from within the inside. This keeps it kind of in one shape and you're able to keep the ring 
and you don't end up with this giant pile of yarn that you can't do anything with. So I've already pulled it out and you'll find like, there's like this little, this little knotty, not knotty, knotty. There's this little knot bit that you kind of pull out and I'm just gonna cut that off. Cut that off here. Okay, and that's my beginning. And now I have my yarn and my thread is being pulled out appropriately. Ready to get out one of my needles. The cool thing about needle boxes is they're designed to be little carrying cases as well. So don't just rip off you know, from the bottom or whatever, kind of pull back from the top and you'll notice that it will stay attached. So you grab one of your needles. Might have to really pull at it. All right, so you have a needle and now your needles, this serves as a carrying case. Cool, so now you're ready to thread. This is probably, actually no, we're not ready to thread because we're not ready to sew because we need to wrap and then sew, I'm way ahead of myself. Okay, so you are ready to wrap. Okay, so we have our, our, our mallet, we're ready to go. Um, some people just depending, this is, this is my technique, this is definitely not the only technique. Okay, so what you want to start with is, is kind of put your thumb Hold the, the, the thread and, and put your thumb around on the bottom, kind of securing it. Let me try to get that in the camera. This isn't working. All right, so I'm kind of securing the thread across the bottom. And I'm gonna take a couple of loops around. Okay, so I've just kind of looped around a couple of times, right? Now for the first couple of wraps, you're gonna need to keep your finger on the thumb. Otherwise, it's gonna unravel because we're, what we're using is we're going to be using tension to keep the, the, the wrap in place, and then after, we're gonna go back in and sew everything up, okay? So I've wrapped it across the bottom, okay? So there it is across the bottom, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the outside of the mallet, so around the right side of the mallet, and I'm coming down over the left side at kind of a diagonal angle. Okay, let me show that again. So I, I've gone around the right side, and then I'm coming around the left side to create kind of a diagonal angle. All right, and, and I, as far as across the top, you're, you're gonna wanna kind of, uh, you're gonna wanna come, come to the left of the center of it. Um, that's, that's the way I do it. That's gonna leave you room and it's eventually going to create a crown that we're going to sew. We're gonna sew into a nice kind of neat crown. Now when I pulled it off, I noticed that that was covered and then later the layers were kind of covered up. I'm gonna use this little nub here that's in my mouth. I'm gonna use that as a kind of a guide. Okay, and I'm not, I'm not holding it super tight. You know, I'm just kind of a little bit. And then I'm gonna rotate it just a little. And I, I'm, some people will teach you to rotate 90 degrees. I have found that that creates kind of a, a boxy square mallet head. Not a fan of that. So I just rotate it some. So about like that. And then I'm gonna come down on the other side like that. Twist it again, rotating it, coming across the top. That's what it looks like on the back side. And, you, and then you continue until you feel like you can kind of let go of the, the ring across the bottom and continue around the outside. Now, how long does it take you to wrap one mallet, generally? Uh, when, when I was doing this a lot more often, this would take me maybe half an hour. You know, from, from start, from cut to ta-da, it's done. Um, but uh, but now, today it might take a little longer because it's been a while since I've, <laughs> since I've actually wrapped mallets. I, I actually, I, I had to go out and buy more yarn because I couldn't find my mallet stuff. All right, so we've made now one complete trip around. Okay, and you'll notice it's not perfect and that's okay. At this point, I'm not, I'm not worried about perfect at all. I'm not worried about spacing. I'm not, you know, even though I'm, I'm pretty OCD, I'm not, you know, hardcore kind of, it's, it's not exactly right because I'm not a machine. I'll never be a machine. And so expecting the kind of precision that was on the mallet when I pulled it off is, is unrealistic, is unrealistic. Okay, so as I'm gonna go another trip around and this time I am filling in the gaps on the area that I originally had. Doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of going around. Again, going around the left side or the, the right side 
away from you and then coming down the right side as it come as it's coming towards you. Just keep going around and around, rotating the mallet, eyeballing, seeing, okay, where do I need where do I need to fill in some space? Right? I'm looking like as I'm pulling it around, I'm looking for this the the blank space. And I'm going to put my thread like there's a blank space right there. So I'm going to put my thread right in that blank space. And as I'm looking on the, the top of it, I'm going to pull it around. Now that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty gnarly looking at the top. And that's okay. That's all right. I, I don't need it to be perfect. Okay, so I'm, I'm going around the top, finding, finding an, an empty spot that I can kind of lay the thread in. And as I bring it around, I look for an empty spot that I can put it into. And you kind of keep going around like this. Uh, until you can't find any more of those spots. Just turning, I'm turning maybe like 10 degrees, 15 degrees. And you just keep going around and around. Pull out some more of the thread. Keep going around. And I'm not, this isn't a ton of pressure. I'm not really squeezing tight. I'm, I'm holding tight enough to where, you know, as I come back around, I put my thumb under it. And so it keeps some pressure, but it's not, it's not super tight, right? Because what we're going to do when we're all wrapped and when we're ready to, 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 put, to sew in the crown and sew in the, the collar, um, if it's too tight, then our needle's not going to be able to, to, to get to where we need it to be, Okay. So uh, we're going to take a really quick break, and as I am, when I come right back, you'll see that I will have filled in all of these, all of these kind of blank spaces. So we'll be right back. Okay, as you see, I have now uh, wrapped up around all of the uh, the outside, and you can see that a nice crown has started uh, taking shape. And this is uh, the the hole that we've created that we will eventually sew when when we're ready to get to that phase. Now, what you would need to do is is strike it onto something and make sure that um, that you like the sound. And when you go to the first mallets are the easy one. It's the second, the third, and fourth mallet. If you're wrapping four mallets, uh, that gets that can be really difficult because you you have to match the timbre. So so I'm going to uh, I'm going to take a quick second. I'm going to go hit this, see if I like it, and uh, and we'll see how it goes. Make sure that you kind of wrap some around the bottom, and then you can hold it, and I just kind of squirrel it around the outside. I'll be right back. All right, that's feeling pretty good. I actually like it, and I have one of the old mallets, which is going to give me a little bit more of an attack than I actually need because it's a little threadbare. So I'm going to give it a few more, uh, a few more revolutions around, or a few more rotations, just to make sure. So I'm going to find my spot here, and uh, just. So when you start this project, you you have an idea of what the sound is going to be like, and you're constantly testing. Correct. Yeah, I test it on the are. instrument. Um, and, and before I do, before I start wrapping um, or before I start kind of just spot checking, I'm going to take the mallet and I'm going to grab the top of it and using my other two fingers kind of come up underneath it. Let me do it with my other hand and, and kind of push down a little bit. This is going to loosen up some of the threads. That's kind of what I'm doing. You can see, what, see that on the camera. Um, and I'm making sure that, that everything it's just kind of loosens it up, loosens it up a little bit. Just kind of squeeze it down. Okay. That doesn't look too shabby. What do you think, Troy? <laughs> well, I think it looks great, Jake. Thanks, man. I, I guess it. the question then is, do you change your wrapping technique in terms of how you wrap if you want something with more attack or if you want something with more... I would, I would, change, saw? I would change the thread and I would okay. change uh, maybe uh, how, much, how much yarn I put on it. Right. Obviously, you want to cover up the, the, the head. You don't, you don't want any of the actual core showing. 
right? But if I wanted a, a, a much softer, more legato mallet, then I would use a softer, more legato yarn. Like I said, it's like, it's kind of like Indian food. Like I don't really like Indian food. I like the one thing I like at Indian <laughs> restaurant. And so I get that every single time. And so when I say I'm in the mood for Indian, I don't, I'm not really in the mood for chicken tikka masala. You're really saying you want butter chicken. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, so this one technique is the only technique I use. So I don't really change up my technique. Um, the, the shape of the mallet uh, will change, you know, how it sounds and how it reacts. The, um, the yarn will, you know, if you go to a size four yarn versus a size three or a ply, three ply or whatever, and how, how, how many... Um, how many revolutions I put. Because this is a, a two cord, I know that it's going to give me a lot more attack. Okay. And I'm, now, if I wanted, uh, let's say, a, a more staccato mallet, mm -hmm. does the, the construct, what is the word I'm looking for? Material of the wool, say polypropylene mm -hmm. or um, maybe actual merino wool or something like that, do you, do you adjust for that if, if you want a certain sound? I think that I think that has to do more with the uh, number of plies and the the density of of the yarn, because at this point, because we're kind of tying it so wrapping it so tight and in in of itself, the plies really matter as opposed to the material of of the uh, of of the yarn itself. Now that might have something to do like does acrylic um, does acrylic hold up better over time? Maybe you know it, that might be more to it. Um, I actually picked this this out partly because of the color. I, I wanted a, a nice bright color, and also it was the correct size. It was a size three, and it was more of a cord. Now, this was really the only brand that had a size three in a cord without giving getting into like embroidery cords, which are sold in much smaller packs and is actually even smaller. And so you would spend more time, you know, wrapping. And this will fluff up over time as you hit it. Um, it will start to thin a little bit, and as it thins, it kind of fluffs. The uh, you know, if I if I looked at if I looked at some of this old stuff here, it seems really kind of fluffy, you know. And, and that that has to do with um, the yarn as it's been hit over time. Now, have you found that your hand wrapping lasts just as long as a store bought uh, model? Uh, I I don't. I don't think so. I don't think it lasts as long because the store bot is so consistent, um, and because you, you kind of hesitate to to even even cut the first time. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you kind of stretch it out. But once it's your own, you're like, okay, and then you cut it off when you're when you're done. Um, I I think I've only rewrapped like a re re rewrapped once one pair of mallets. I, now I have completely cut off mallets because I hated the color. <laughs> Or I found like uh, I had some black mallets, and for marimba, it was the the peripheral vision really kind of uh, handicapped me because I I wasn't hitting the notes I needed. So I've cut off because I didn't like the black. Black works great for uh, cymbal mallets because especially if you're in a pit, an orchestra pit or something, they're really um, they're really discreet, you know. So I like those. It's the same same kind of reason I have like black timpani mallets, even though the the beaters are are uh, are white or that the heads are white, uh, they look great sitting on a stand. And, and so likewise, with I use black yarn for cymbal mallets almost exclusively. But for, um, for keyboard mallets, I definitely like a brighter color. So, all right, so I'm, I'm ready to sew. I am ready to sew. I've got what I like. And so what I'm going to do across the bottom is I'm going to make kind of a ring around two or three times. All right, I just kind of wrapped it around a couple of times. And then I'm going to give myself an absurd amount of length because the absolute last thing you want to have happen at this point is to run out of yarn. <laughs> so I just give myself maybe, maybe six feet. Might not be, you know, might be too much, but, but it is what it is. And I've got an, actually a knot here in my yarn, which might dictate. So if you need to put the, if you need to put the mallet down, wrap it up nice and tight, like kind of like this like a lollipop and I've got a, a knot here that I need to either embrace and cut around or try to undo. I think I'll be able to undo it. There we go. All right, so now I have, I have my length. I cut it off and now I'm committed to this length of yarn. This might actually be too much. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. 
So now it's ready. You're ready for the needle. You're ready for the needle. And I'm going to go ahead and thread that up. And this is the part that was, uh, that was mind, mind blowing to me when Rachel was showing this. I really wish I could remember her last name. <laughs> is, is the sewing. Because this is, this is kind of where the, the, this is what separates, you know, anybody can do the wrapping part, but it's the sewing that was the real magic. So I'm going to just kind of squish that flat and I'm trying my absolute best to, to, to thread. Now they make like threaders and such. I'm just looking at this a little bit, flatten it, try to get it in there, twist it, lick it again. Flatten it. And this might be the end of me right here. Show over. All right. I think it's going to do it. Nope. All right. So I couldn't get it in that time. So I'm going to have to cut off a new piece. Trim it just a little bit. I probably should have gotten one of those. They make, they make little kind of gadgets which make this easier. I didn't think I needed it. In retrospect, that was a bad decision. I only have one sewing story, and my wife one year for Christmas said I wanted a sewing machine. Not, well, not I wanted. She wanted a sewing machine, and I told her there are other ways that I, as a husband, can earn my white trash black belt. <laughs> um, and she was really adamant. I'm like, I can't buy you a sewing machine for Christmas. That's like buying you an oven or something. You know, just something <laughs> awful. She's like, No, I really, really, really want a sewing machine. And I, I finally came to terms with it, and then I went down to, it wasn't Michael's, but it was a, a sewing machine shop, and I was obviously the only male in there <laughs> on a mission. Um, and, and people would come right up to me and be like, oh, hello, are you lost? What can I help you <laughs> the with? The best buy is next door. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's exactly what it was. Um, uh, are you? I was sitting there looking at sewing machines, trying not to spend a fortune. You know, I, they come in... All kinds of things with embroidery gadgets and pre-programming, like some four-axis CNC milling machine. Um, it was really impressive to me. So I finally decided on a, on a model that gave everything that she wanted. Um, and, you know, bought the sewing machine and, and gave it to her for Christmas. She was so, so excited. Three years later, that thing is still in the box. Oh. Yep. That's a sad story, she, man. Every time she's tried to get to a class or or sign up for this, that, or the other thing, there's always been something that has come up um, that has not allowed her to whip out her shiny sewing machine. All right, so I finally got it threaded. Finally, thank you very much, Troy, for filling in the gap there. Um, and I'm only going to leave just a little bit because remember, however much you leave, you have to pull through. Right, you have to pull through as you start sewing, and I'm really, really concerned that I might have, I might have too much here, but, but we don't want to double it up super long. So I've, I've, I've left maybe six inches or so here, and I'm gonna let it, let it kind of fall and let the, um, let it kind of untwist a little bit because it's a little twisted. Okay, so we have the mallet, we're nice and tight, and the first thing you want to do is sew off the bottom. Okay, we want to sew up the bottom collar. All right, so I'm going to pull it to where I want it to be, okay, which is about right there. And then, holding one of the sides here, I'm, I'm put, got my thumb on the side of the mallet, and I'm going to come under... Actually, I'm going to hold it around the back. Okay, I'm going to come under the collar. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. I'm kind of under the collar. And I'm going to come back out one of the spots. So it looks kind of like that. Remember, I'm under the collar loop that I just made. All right, so come out like that and pull it out. Make sure that nothing tangles. Make sure that nothing tangles. Yeah, I'm going to have to straighten this out again. Okay, and you have your first loop here. Okay, I'm going to let this fall again. 
to hopefully kind of straighten it out because it's it's twisted and it's it runs the risk of tangling or knotting as as I'm pulling it through. Okay, all right. So now, now this is this is what it looks like. It's come out the the top hole there, and I'm going to go over just a little bit, right? beside it just a little bit, try not to stick myself. And I'm going to go under the collar again and pop out kind of right beside it. And this can be the infuriating part, okay? So it looks like that. There's my first stitch, okay? This is my second stitch. Come through, pull it through. I'm holding the thread with these other two fingers to kind of keep it from, from knotting up. And now I'm going to tug it tight. And we can see here that I've got a, a little stitch. A little stitch right there. And so I'm going to go around the entire collar around the, the outside, sewing up the bottom collar. So go under the collar. And this is where my OCD kicks in. Because you want it to be yeah, really Dave, consistent. Your collar. <laughs> I want it to be really consistent, and I don't want to go up too far into the mallet, because as soon as you pull it down, as soon as you, you tie off the stitch, then that's going to pull the yarn at the bottom. That's what we're doing. These stitches are going to be pulling the bottom yarn, and then we're going to go back up, and we're going to do the crown, and the crown is going to pull the top yarn. Right. This is uh, this. This will keep it nice and tight, and will give it a very pro finish. Okay. So now you can see I have two stitches. I'm gonna go across the bottom collar. Come out the top, and by top I mean the top of the collar. Holding the yarn in these two fingers, flattening it out, pulling it. Move over just a little bit, just rotate it. And you can see that you can see the bottom collar start to take shape. You can see how the the uh, the, the threads or the stitches rather, start creating a nice uniform shape. It helps lift the yarn away from the shaft and it's just really a really nice pro, pro look. So I'm gonna do that and, uh, and we'll be right back with the bottom collar finished. Okay, I'm ready to put in the, the last stitch around uh, my collar and you'll notice, uh, by the way, there's, a, there's kind of a shot of that. Um, I wonder if I can get, come on camera. Uh, anyway, uh, the camera's too smart. You'll notice that as you start getting around and as you start moving around the bottom of the collar, you will eventually find yourself having to thread under already existing stitches, the first stitch. And that can be where it can get really difficult. And that's where, you know, if you don't have your seamstress hands broken in like I don't, um, then it can get kind of painful on the hands or you might have to, 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 to really work it under. But I'm ready for my last stitch and I've got to come under a, an area that already has a, um, a stitch on it, which, which if you, if you picked up a tapestry needle, this is where you're done because you're never going to be able to get that tapestry needle, um, under it. So I've got to kind of come under it and pop out of the top at an angle to where it doesn't come up too far up into the, to the mallet head, but it still allows me to, um, to finish my last stitch. So it can be, it can be a challenge. And so I'm going to kind of push it on the desk here and, uh, and go from there. I'm just pushing it down on the desk and now I've got it under. But you can see I'm, I'm underneath an existing stitch. But it's my last stitch, so it's okay. Pulling it out the last one. And my hands are, okay. Thankfully, that is my last stitch. Now at this point, we need to make, we need to travel the needle up to come out of the center of the crown. Because what we're going to do is we are going to come in or around and start working 
the crown kind of in the opposite. And the way, the way we did the bottom is we came from the outside and worked towards us. This time we're working from the inside of the crown and coming towards us. So I need to get my, my needle up there. So I'm going to kind of work at an angle, right? Starting from kind of where it is. I'm going to work from an angle from the entry point that it has, and I'm going to come out kind of about halfway through. Again, using your other fingers to kind of keep it flat. All right, and so now my exit, my yarn exit is about halfway up the mallet. And then I am going to, thinking like a, a, a wrap, okay, I'm going to continue that angle, okay, and I'm going to find a place to kind of sink it in. And I need to come out of the top of the crown like that. Okay, now this stitch, I don't want to pull super tight because otherwise what's going to happen is it's going to put a tight stitch right in the center. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to pull it through. Pulling it through. Okay, and you, and you can see, I don't know if you can see, but, but the stitch is right there. And I've got the needle coming out the center of the crown. Okay, so now I'm going to come around the outside push in just a little bit and try to f figure out where along, where do you want the crown stitching to, to terminate, right? Where do you want that, that crown to be? And how big do you want the crown to be, right? Again, this is where I, I don't look at the, 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 the machine one because I'm never going to get it, you know, that tight and that tiny, All right? So I'm going to come around just, just around a little bit. Okay. I'm going to kind of push down and pushing into the crown or uh, outside of the crown, and I need to come out of the middle again. Okay, so I came out of the middle, pull it through, and I have my first crown stitch. And I'm gonna, gonna turn it just a little bit. I need to make sure that my, my next crown stitch is kind of across the same um, horizontal line. Okay, because that's going to create a crown all the way. The bottom one you can be a little bit more forgiving with, because it's you know it's it's uh, it's the bottom, and you're never you're not going to really see it, and the shaft is in the way. But the top crown is very very visible, and if you're like me, you want it to look nice. So I'm going to go around just a little bit, go on a perpendicular or horizontal line, go around the outside, come through the middle of the hole in the crown, and pull it through. Oh, I got a little knot. Got to back it up. Okay, this is, I'm glad this happened. Well, I, I really hate that it happened, but for teaching purposes, it's okay that it happened. I, this, this is a knot that happened as I was pulling the yarn, all right? And I have no, oppor no option but to work it out, right? So this just happens. It just happens as things twist and they get a little knotted up. You undo it. Cutting it is not an option, Okay. This is why it's so important to kind of hold the thread as you're working it around. All right, there we go. Crisis averted, everybody. Okay, I'm gonna move over just a little bit. Sink it in, come out through the top. Okay, move it over. Sink it, come out through the top. And I don't have to go all the way in. What we're doing here is, is we're tying off all of the top stitches, the, the, the wraps that kind of came over the top, kind of towards the middle. What we're doing is we're tying that all together nice and tight so that they won't roll off to the sides. This, I mean, this is, is cosmetic as much as it is practical. But I don't need to like super dig down heavily into, into the mallet. Okay, this is actually much easier than the, um, than the bottom, than the collar. Okay, go around again. Oh, we got another knot. Come on, Dave, pulling too fast. The trouble with knots is if you pull the wrong thread, then uh, then things then things start. Uh, you run Getting up. progressively worse. Right, yeah. If you pull the wrong side, then you just make the knot tighter instead of making it to where you can loosen it 
This is where having a little fingernail helps a lot. Or using the needle itself. There we go. Okay, I think it's that same spot. Okay, tell you what, I am going to, I'm gonna let it dangle so it doesn't twist. And as you work, as you work with the thread, because the, the yarn is essentially small threads which are twisted together, and the, it, it wants to twist more as you work with the yarn. So it's, imagine like wrapping up a mic cable or something. Okay, continuing on. Go around the outside, come under it. Pulling it through. Okay, kind of flatten it. Look across the top, make sure that you haven't missed anything. I'm gonna take another pass, All right? Just to give it a nice, nice tight crown. This is thrilling, isn't it, for you, Troy? <laughs> no, I like to say I'm just trying to stay out of your way. Like, <laughs> let's listen to Dave. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it that way, All right, I'm, um, I'm almost done, actually. I can always check that off my bucket list. Listen to someone. So, it's as exciting as it sounds. All right, this is going to be my last crown stitch. Okay, as my last crown stitch, inspect it. It's not, it's not too shabby, but the end result is, is a pretty nice, pretty nice mallet. Okay, and I, I have quite a bit of, of yarn left, and that's okay. That's okay. I would much rather have too much yarn than not enough yarn. Absolutely. Okay, so now uh, what we need to do is we need to finish the stitching job. And we're not going to tie anything off. What we're going to do is bury the thread or bury the needle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the inside, right? So I'm going into the inside of the crown. I'm going to pop out, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it around and then and come out another side and do that a few times and bury. Okay, so there's that. Now I am going to come around the outside and come out through the bottom here. Again, I'm looking to, to bury the thread. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sinking the needle here. I'm essentially making it to where the, uh, the, the, the thread, it won't come undone, right? It, it's not gonna unravel itself. It'd be very, very impossible to do that. Okay, so now I'm kind of at the bottom again, and so I'm going to go up kind of like we were doing when we were first uh, traveling the yarn to the top. Okay, and for my final, I'm going to have one more stitch to come out of the top. So I'm coming out of the center of the crown, making sure that I don't clip any other yarn or any other stitch. Okay, and so now, I have thread pulling out of the top, and all you have to do is go in. I'm actually gonna cut it off a little bit. Cut that off, and then I can go in and trim it a lot closer. Okay, and uh, if, if I was so inclined, I would go in and, and really clean that up to make sure that that stitch doesn't show or anything. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. It's cosmetic. And there you go. You have a finished wrapped mallet and, and kind of push it a little bit up and down. The mallet will, over time, will um, settle in. And, uh, and you have a mallet that doesn't you know, resemble this anymore. So there we go. Woo! Thanks for watching.